Just checking in here real quick. I'm gonna switch that over there. How's everyone? How's everyone doing? Wanted to do a quick little scope here. It's uh, 6:52 p.m. and uh, we are uh, still seeing daylight, which is awesome. Um, yeah, well, I'm seeing a lot of you guys coming on, but I'm not seeing the numbers. That's kind of weird. Bunch of you are jump jumping on tons but I'm only seeing six people. That's weird. Maybe there's an update that I don't have updated yet. Anyway, uh, <laughs> cigar time. Don says, hey, Don. Um, yeah, so really, uh, I just wanted to, yeah, you're only seeing six. Now I'm seeing 24. Here we go. Now we're starting to have them come in. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, other people are having that same issue, huh? First Periscope. Way to go. Who is that? Is it Jared? Let's go. Um, yeah, so wanted to uh let's get this party started that's right so i wanted to uh just drop in and do a quick scope kind of let you know what's kind of on on my mind hey charles um today i recorded a a couple interviews actually but i did one today of a hot seat session um and um let's see hey joel from jerusalem wow awesome first time live sweet glad to have you um I did a hot seat session today. Chris Schaefer and I both did a hot seat uh, session today, and uh, we were breaking down this guy's business. For those of you that are brand new, um, you know I uh, I love talking about other people's businesses and really seeing if there's anything that we can do to um, enhance it or if we can find any holes in it. And the one the one thing that I seen uh, you know or I'm seeing is a lot of times it's it's simple things and a lot of times the people that have have done you know already taken the action and already kind of got going after the fact they probably you know they not probably they they usually see some of those some of those problems is this live yes this is live if you're watching the replay then no it's a replay but it's uh 6 54 uh p.m um eastern time by the way um and if you guys are just tuning in do me a quick favor. If you guys um, would help me uh, get my Periscope followers up to uh, 3,000, that would be cool. Just go ahead and share it. That would be awesome. Just swipe the screen, click share. If you guys aren't followers, go ahead and click on the little buddy icon there. Um, thank you, Hop Hopkins. Uh, okay, so um, thank you so much for the invites, by the way, guys. You guys are awesome. Um, so yeah, so the big problem here with this gentleman, and here, here's what he said. He said, basically, he had a product. He discovered the product right around November of 2015. It was um, it was a, a product that he received, and he was like, wow, this is awesome. Um, uh, <laughs> Scott, just here, uh, say you'll have to get back to the game. No problem. Get back to the game. Yeah, that's right, too. A lot of college ball on today, too, by the way. I filled out my brackets. I'm not doing that good. Um, okay, so, you know, he discovered this product, wasn't even in the market for selling on Amazon. Someone started talking to him about it, and then he's like, oh my gosh, this is a cool little product. Let me go see if it's uh, if it's something I can sell. So he went and did the sourcing and all that stuff, but the one thing he didn't do was really go and look at depth of market, and he didn't look to see if there was a trend. And if he had did that, he probably wouldn't have released that product. Now, not saying that that product um, isn't still going to be able to sell, um, you know, he's still, you know, getting a few sales, but the problem, um, the problem is, is that it's probably going to have a spike usually probably around holidays or gift giving time. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to say the product, uh, someone just asked for the product. Um, so yeah, mistake number two is, you know, is it already a good product, but does it need to be better? It's not necessarily the product. It's the, it's the, the demand of the product at this time of year. Um, you know, so it's not even just seasonal. It's just, it's more of a gift giving. Um, and if that's the case, you know, if you would have did that research in the beginning, you probably would have identified that. And then you would have been like, okay, I guess there's probably a problem, you know, problem with this. Now, yesterday I did a, a scope uh, after I, I did a uh, coaching call and I told you guys it was very similar. The problem is, uh, or the problem with him was, is when he was looking at it in fourth quarter, the numbers were skewed a little bit and then now the numbers have kind of like balanced out and he's doing like four to six sales a day. The problem is everyone else is doing four to six sales a day. So that's pretty much where you're gonna be. Um, 
Uh, so someone there says, uh, I firmly believe that you have to make it better to be able to do. I, I agree to some to some degree. Uh, I don't think it's always the case, but definitely. But if the demand isn't there, it doesn't matter how good the product is. You're, you're barely going to get the sales because the sales volume is not there. People aren't looking for it. So you got to have a product that's in demand. And I say a product in demand. It doesn't have to be like crazy demand. It needs to be like selling 10 units a day. Um, you know, yeah, for big success, of course. And if you want to get really big success with one product, then you better go after a really high demand and you better go after some competition. With that, I would warn anyone that you're going to be, you know, really going down a tough road, okay? Because what happens is you're now competing with everyone else. Um, and then they're spending money to do promos. You're going to do spend money to do promos. You're going to spend on pay-per-click. You're going to drive up your cost and all that stuff. I'd rather find those, those smaller, you know, I guess demand products, the ones that can do, um, you know, that can do 10 units a day. And if we look at the, at the demand and kind of like the supply and demand and all that stuff, if we look at that stuff, we can get a pretty good, um, idea if, it, if it's going to be successful or not. Um, we've got a pretty good chance. I mean, um, like right now, like everyone on here right now, do me a favor. How many are you shooting for when you launch a product? What is your ideal? And, and don't give me, don't say, I want to sell a thousand a day. Like, yeah, what are you looking at from the criteria and the metrics that you've already went and researched? Like, what is your number? And 10. Okay, good. It's a good number. I like that number. Um, let's see. I'll take a product that sells five to 10 units every day. Cool. Yes. 10, 10 to 20, 10, 10, 20. Okay. Well, you know, yeah, with hopes of 40. Okay. Yeah. 25, 10. Um, okay. So if you get, let's just use the number 10. Cause I love the number 10 because we can do easy math, like 10 by 10 by one. That's my strategy, which is 10 units sold per day, $10 profit. And that's one product. Okay. hundred bucks a day. What are you striving for right now? I want you to imagine right now that you can make it happen. What are you striving for per day that you want to earn in profit right now and you know what would that what would that do for you right now that that little bit you know someone that comes here and says i want to make a million dollars in 3 months you're you're not going at it the right way um like right now if you were to sell 10 units a day um eBay has made it impossible to sell products with good profit margins. Well, maybe on eBay, but I don't necessarily think that's Amazon. And Amazon's kind of similar depending on the market that you're in and the, and the, the supply and demand that you're in. If you have, if you don't have that much demand or supply, um, you know, you can, um, you know, you, you can, uh, you know, you can pretty much bank on that you're going to have a tough time if you're going after something that doesn't have that demand, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Uh, $800 a day profit. Yeah, that would be amazing, right? Uh, want to get to the hundred dollars a day and profit first. Exactly. Because here's the thing, guys, if you can get there, the chances of you getting further and expanding on that is a lot easier. Okay. Now I'm not going to say it's easier. I'm just saying it gets easier. Let's see if I move back over here. Now, now the sun is kind of going down. Um, so I like people to take baby steps and I like to also, um, you know, be able to do that first part of product research, which I think is critical. And today when we were doing the hot seat, it was all about the research. And he, he admitted it too, when he was asking, um, $200 a day so I can focus full time. Okay. That's a good number. I like that number. I was shooting for a hundred dollars a day and now make $800 a day profit from one product. Perfect. Right. I mean, that can happen. Uh, and again, you, in your mind, you're shooting for 10, uh, 10, uh, sales a day at $10 profit. That's a hundred dollars a day. But you all of a sudden, well, you know, you took action and now you're making more. So that, that can happen. I've, I've heard that happen more than once. All right. So that totally can happen. Um, thinking about launching into supplements, um, hop Hopkins. Um, yes, I actually am. Um, and I'm, I'm closer than ever actually. So, um, and I'm going to be sharing that, uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen from it. Um, they're not going to be supplements that are like, get, you know, you know, lose six inches off your waist overnight. Um, yeah, uh, we forget sometimes good surprises happen too. That's exactly right. Um, but yeah, I, I am going to be dabbling in that market. Um, it's not, like I said, it's not going to be fat loss, um, you know, you know, basically lose six inches overnight type stuff, um, scammy type stuff. It, it's actually, um, do I think supplements are too saturated? Yes, in some parts they are. I think you have to have a unique spin or you have to have a unique person that can create, um, a special product and a special story behind the product. I think that's key. The only reason why I'm even thinking about this is because 
I have someone that's an expert in this field and they are um, willing to be the face in the forefront and really be the educator. Um, because I, I think that if we can educate people, then they're going to want to buy the product through the educator. Um, yeah, you're in the manufacturing side? Yeah, hook me up. Go ahead and uh, reach out to me. I'd love to uh, to definitely talk about that. We're actually uh, interviewing suppliers right now. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but I, I think going back to the supply and demand, um, you know, it, it does come down to looking at Google Trends, looking at Camel, 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 doing all of that research, not just grabbing the product and throwing it up there. Have people, you know, have people done that and succeeded? Absolutely. It's risky, though. Right, it's riskier. Let's say that. Okay, it's definitely riskier. Um, E-commerce is also so competitive. Keywords in Google are so hard to rank on most of demand products. That's true, but there's there's definitely room always in there. And you know what? Here's the thing. Um, what about liability issues? A lot of times, liability issues on the supplements, guys, um, they have their own liability um, with anything with the product. You will want to have your own liability, though. Do you need to be FDA approved? The facility will be FDA approved, but not necessarily the product has been FDA approved. And again, I'm just learning about this stuff, so I can't give you exact stuff right now. Um, I know it is a, a little bit of a tight line there. Um, how do you tell the story on supplements? I'll, I'll tell you how you, you do this. You have someone that knows all about the different ingredients, what they do, where they come from, why they benefit the body, what they do to help you, and then also why they decided to create this special formula. Then they educate. They educate by answering questions, the common questions, then questions that, that come in from people that are watching your YouTube videos or they're consuming your content. Um, yeah, e-commerce saturation, I was talking about that. Well, I don't necessarily think e-commerce, I think there's always gonna be room for people that wanna go in there and create a brand and a specialty and a premium, I think. Um, in sales copy or website, I think uh, I think what we're talking about here is about creating that story. I think both. If you can have that person, the face of that person, speak to the people, the person is a trustworthy person, the person has a good personality, then I would speak on video and I would demonstrate. And then from there, I would also go and start um, writing content. Um, yeah, so I mean, like I said, anything, even if you're selling you know, a garlic press, if you're a chef and you just breathe you know, cooking, then create yourself a face to that brand and just really teach people how to cook. And then they're going to want to buy, look at Emerald, right? The guy that says, bam, with all of the garlic and everything, right? He's got his own seasoning line now. He's got his own product line. People are going to buy that, that product. That product, yeah, it was kind of tweaked with him, but guess what? It's got his name on it. Derek Jeter, great baseball player, New York Yankee, shortstop, right? He's got cologne. Do you think that, do you think that he knows how to make cologne? No, but he knows the kind that he likes to wear and the scent that he likes, so now he makes the clone. He's the story. He's the promoter. That's a little bit of a different story. But if you can educate people, um, if you can educate people, people get value. People can actually move through the timeline of getting results without even buying a product. They're going to want to buy your product. Um, <laughs> Emerald's chicken rub is the bomb. That's nice. I haven't tried that one, but I definitely will. I like I like uh, Emerald. Got a great show, right? He's got a, got a band, right? He, he made it all into a show, you know. So it, it's good stuff. Um, but all right, guys, I got to run. It's starting to get dark, actually. Uh, it's seven oh six. Um, I've also got a, a live workshop I'm doing tonight. So uh, or bam, what did I say? Uh, yeah, it is bam, bam, right? I'm gonna put a little extra garlic in there. Bam. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, I got a live workshop tonight. I got to get ready for, uh, let's see. I got to do that at nine o'clock. We'll be getting out about eight 45. So, uh, yeah, the workshop, what time is the workshop? It's at 9 PM Eastern time. I'll be getting out about eight 45. Um, you can still register at the amazing seller.com forward slash workshop. If you're watching the replay, you can still, um, register for an upcoming workshop. And, uh, basically we go through the five phases for launching a product. We answer live Q and a, we also talk a little bit about the private label classroom as well. So, um, yeah, so we'd love to have you guys attend. If you're uh, not doing anything later and you guys want to jump on and hang out, that would be cool. And uh, if not, I'll catch you guys later and uh, get out there and do it, right? Get out there and make something happen. Um, 
And just, you know, the other thing I just want to remind you guys is that, you know, nothing is easy, right? It's going to take work. You guys hear me talking about this all the time. But think about baseball for a second, right? You go up there, you get three swings, you miss, you strike out, you go sit down, you wait until you're next at bat. It's the same thing here, okay? It's the same thing here. You, you have to keep swinging the bat, all right? And you got to practice. And practice means launching a product and maybe not getting it right the first time, but learning through that process, okay? Um, except don't go sit down. Right, get your glove, get ready to go out on the field, right? Um, so, yeah. So, all right, guys, I got to run. I appreciate it. If you guys could do me a, a huge favor and share this on Facebook or uh Twitter, Periscope, wherever you're at, share this, swipe the screen, share it with others. We're almost up to 100 now, which is amazing. Let's get it up to 100 before we jump off here. We're at 98 now, 97, 98. Heart it up. Give some last minute love. Would love that. We're almost there at 100. Um, cool. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you. Love the scopes. Cool. Um, all right, guys, that's it, and uh, I appreciate you, and tomorrow is Friday. There will be another podcast coming out tomorrow, and yes, there are some really good ones coming up. I, like I said, I did an interview today with uh, an attorney about trademark, about patents, about um, copyrights, all of that good stuff, so that's coming up. I've got a great interview coming up with a guy that went from zero to $100,000 a month in eight months, um, so yeah, awesome. Uh, yeah, close to 3,000 what hearts. Yeah. So yeah, get, get that up, get that up, get those hearts, triple tap, quadruple tap. That would be cool. They're colorful. They're beautiful. And, uh, I'm having a late night coffee. This is my second cup today, but I got it late. I got busy this afternoon. All right, guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Take care. Take action. Peace. Love you. See you later.